So could the new Samsung Galaxy A55 be actually one of the best phones you can currently purchase? In this video we will find out. Compared to last year's A54, we now got a full metal build quality on this new A55. And it feels absolutely great in hand. And it feels mega premium basically. So the sides are brushed aluminium. And we got a new design feature as well, where the buttons here are on the raised platform. And also we got a glass back, so which is kind of cool as well. On the front we got 6.6 inch AMOLED display with 120 Hz refresh rate, and it feels very very smooth. And we also got very nice stereo speakers, one of the bottom here and one of the top here. And the sound also is very very nice and very loud and very clear as well. So we now got a support for dual SIM card setup. So we can insert SIM cards on both sides or we can also insert one SIM card and one uh, memory card so we can expand the storage of this phone. Also my version also comes with eSIM so we can actually insert more than two SIM cards, practically unlimited SIM cards in this Galaxy A55 which is very impressive indeed. Also the phone is fully waterproof with IP67 rating so that's very cool and when we check out the SIM card it was very very sealed with proper uh, sealings and yep all looks very nice. And we got absolutely huge 5000 milliamp battery on this phone. Unfortunately we only have a charging using the Type-C cable. We don't have a wireless charging on this model which is a shame and considering the price of this phone I am really wondering why they didn't include wireless charging. That's such a bummer really. Also, unlike on the last year's A54, we now got 8 gigs of RAM on every model. We also got a choice of 12 gig version where you have to pay extra for that. And for storage you got 128 gigs as on this one and also 256 if you pay a bit more. Also the CPU power is greatly improved with this model and we got Exynos 1480 CPU in this phone. So and compared to the last year's uh, A54 we can see around 30% performance increase in the CPU performance basically which is very cool indeed. And it's very well protected as well with Gorilla Glass Victus Plus uh, on the back and also on the front so you don't have to worry much about scratching it. So very good resistance with a very very good build quality overall. Also we got improved cameras on this phone as well this year. So uh, the main camera is 50 megapixels with this side sensor basically. Also I have a comparison against the a bit lower and cheaper A35. So both of them has got 50 megapixel a main camera however the sensor size is actually much larger on this one. So you can get better performance on this one. Also the ultra wide camera is 12 megapixel and much bigger than on that uh, a bit cheaper one. Again same macro cameras on both ones and huge improvement in the selfie camera. So we've got 32 megapixel uh, sensor there. So very nice. And while the camera specs on paper actually looks good, in reality I was actually left quite disappointed with the camera performance of this phone. And this is the most uh, basic negative thing about this phone, especially considering the price point of it. While we are able to uh, basically record at 4K 30 frames per second, which sounds nice, the video quality isn't actually uh, what you would expect at this price point. While taking pictures, the end result actually honestly is uh, quite average to be honest. And the camera quality, especially the video, looks uh, like it's coming from basically a low-end phone basically as that was quite, quite surprisingly because the specs are quite good and obviously the build of the phone also feel very good for the cameras. Yeah, I can't really suggest this phone for these cameras. Anyway, in a few days I will be releasing a full camera uh, review of this phone so make sure to subscribe and check that out if you want to see actual samples. While also the specifications of the screen actually sound pretty good and you got 120Hz refresh rate uh, to be honest, when compared to uh, something like A15, which is at the moment three times cheaper, the display quality actually 
to be honest, I, I know I'll get murdered in the comments, but I honestly can't see difference between the displays here. Maybe you can see a, a bit better display on here, but honestly, in everyday usage, I literally can't tell the difference. So that's something to consider. Again, the display of this isn't bad. However, considering the high price point, I was expecting a better display. Again, it's not a bad display. It's just maybe the budget phones of the Samsung now have actually got very, very good displays as well. Okay, let me demonstrate basically. So, can you see much difference between them? By the way, this is the A55 on the top and this is A15, which is three times cheaper. You can maybe see, I don't know if you can see. Actually, sometimes the screen on this actually maybe looks better in some scenes. But you can see that, uh, yeah, maybe just how good the screen on the A15 is. Again, I'm not <laughs> very impressed with the screen of this. Again, it's not a bad screen to be honest. I can't complain it, but, but yeah, for this high price point, I was expecting a better screen to be honest. So yeah, a good demo. So maybe viewing angles. I don't think they... I mean, <laughs> obviously I know some people will get angry at me in the comments saying how it's possible that you, this is a scam or some kind, but you can see proof here. They look pretty much the same. Maybe some difference in shade or for the quality. Yeah. And again, this phone costs almost $500 and it doesn't even have wireless charging. What the hell? So yeah, again, uh, I don't think this is best phone for this year, to be honest, especially considering the price. If it were actually a decent price, this would actually be a very good phone because the build quality of it is actually very premium and very nice. I actually really like it. And it's very, very fast. The processor is very good in this phone indeed. And it feels very, very responsive. Pretty much everything, everything launches very, very fast. And there's no bloatware on these phones. So again, I really can't say this is bad phone because it's not a bad phone. It's actually a very decent phone. However, the price really is a problem for this phone. So the phone currently retails for uh, 479 euros. I paid actually 455 euros and I ordered it on the launch date. So basically, so there are some discounts already on it. However, I would probably wait a few months till this phone becomes cheaper because honestly, I can't suggest to spend you over 300 euros for this phone as it's simply not worth it. While the build quality is there, it's very nice. And uh, the screen is acceptable actually, it's, it's okay and it's very fast. Uh, yeah, the CPU is good, good amount of RAM and everything else. But yeah, the cameras on it are really below average at this price point. So for 179 euros, you can already get like uh, Pixel 8 at this time of filming. And the camera of my Pixel 6a, which is like a few years old model already, and I'm filming this video with this camera basically. Yeah, it's uh, way better cameras on the Pixel 6a, which is a very budget model and kind of old already. And there's will be soon 8a. So yeah, I don't know what the hell Samsung is thinking that they can get away with these cameras on such a pr high price point phone because the cameras of my Pixel 6a, which actually uh, retails for a bit less uh, than this one, is like five times better than on this one. Again, the pricing really needs to improve for this model, otherwise I don't think it will get that many sales. Overall, if you are a basic user and don't really care about the camera that much, but still want a very, very uh, well-built phone with great speeds and performance and very basically smooth, then this is actually a very good phone. But again, wait a couple of months till it drops in the price and then you can maybe purchase it. If this was helpful, make sure to hit the like button. See you.